Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. For more than 50 years, Wild Kingdom explored wildlife and our natural world. Tonight's episode, and many others, focus on the timeless value of wildlife conservation. Wild Kingdom played a critical role in changing public attitudes about the importance of animals for the health of our planet and our own quality of life. We challenge viewers to learn about animals and get involved in conservation in their local communities. That call to action resulted in more visits to local zoos, nature preserves, and even observing animals in their natural habitats. And that connection with animals benefits all of us in the Wild Kingdom. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha, people you can count on. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Probably the most intelligent animal in the world, next to man, is the chimpanzee. Scientists have known for years of the mental acuity of this ape, but recent studies have opened whole new vistas into the nature of one of the world's most familiar and remarkable animals. Because of the expanding human populations, Man has begun competing with chimpanzees for the same territory. This means that chimpanzee family groups must learn to adapt themselves and their complex social structure to different circumstances and habitat. Recently, we were invited by the government of Tanzania and Dr. Junichiro Itani of Kyoto University and director of the Japanese Institute for African Studies to observe the important chimpanzee research in progress. We went first to Tanzania. Then from Kigoma, we traveled for 15 hours by boat to reach the Mahali Mountain Chimpanzee Research Station called Kansoji, here on the Tanzanian shore of Lake Tanganyika. There we were able to observe the fascinating research work being done with the chimpanzees of Tanzania. This is the eastern shore of the lake, and rising abruptly in densely forested slopes are the Mahali Mountains. The chimpanzees which live here have been the focus of intensive scientific studies by Dr. Toshida Nishida of the University of Tokyo. It is here, on the shores of this great African lake, that I've joined the director of the Japanese Institute for African Studies, anthropologist Dr. Junichiro Itani of Kyoto University. Studies being conducted have largely been undertaken from the base camp of the scientists here at Mahali Mountain. The camp is known as Kansoji Research Station. Working here with Dr. Itani are some other researchers, including another anthropologist from Japan, Dr. Koshi Norikoshi of Osaka City University. These scientists work with Tanzanians, such as Ramadani Niyundo, to increase man's knowledge of chimpanzees. Chopping up sugarcane into chunks as bait entices wild chimps to come within range for close observation. Dr. Itani, Ramadani, and I will go to a feeding station nearby to observe female chimps and their young. Later, we'll rejoin Dr. Norikoshi in another feeding area where large males are being studied. Near this area we've come to is where some of the most important observations have been recorded. Woo! 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 
When Ramadani calls, many of the shimps within hearing start moving toward the feeding station. The juveniles are ordinarily first to come. This one is probably about three years old. After seeing them in zoos for so many years, it's a great delight to see them for the first time in their natural habitat. Sometimes the shimps require coaxing as they're already feeding, an occupation which keeps them busy six to eight hours each day. This female is presently enjoying a fleshy fruit which is locally called Lulumasiya. Another commonplace food is an abundant green berry known as Lutafanengua. However much the chimpanzees may try to seem uninterested in the calls they've grown to recognize, and however much natural food there may be for them in the trees which they inhabit, the calling from Ramadani is difficult to ignore. From all over the nearby forest, the chimpanzees begin converging. The feeding station is not far away, and we'll get into good position there to observe the shimps when they begin arriving. The use of chunks of sugarcane as bait in this area allows the scientists to study quite closely the social structure of the chimpanzees and to ascertain certain facts about their communication through voice, gestures, and facial expressions. Though feeding occurs here often, the chimpanzees still approach rather warily. Part of what makes it very difficult to reach conclusions about the shimps is their intermingling, and the small groups habitually formed are not stable. It takes a long time to get wild shimps to come close to man, but once they do, they can begin to be recognized by individual characteristics. That's why the feeding stations are so important in the research. It's amazing to see wild shimps fed by hand. The researchers have learned that these primates are very fond of sugarcane and even while carrying young, become much less cautious when it's given out. There is quite a sense of exhilaration in being able to actually feed a wild shimp myself. I've seen thousands in captivity, but these are the very first I've encountered in the wilds and I find it incredible that I'm actually this close. The individual character traits soon become very apparent, and this female is obviously overtaken by a sense of greed. Dr. Itani and I continue to observe with Ramadani the actions of the chimpanzees as they came to the feeding station at the Mahali Mountain Chimpanzee Research Area. In many ways, the chimpanzees are a great deal like man. They get colds, they're curious, they like to snack at bedtime, and they're devoted to their young. Chimps are, according to Dr. Itani, very nomadic within their territories. Depending upon food availability, they may travel 10 miles per day, even when carrying infants. 
which don't leave the mother at all for the first four months. The notes taken by Dr. Itani and the other researchers from observations here have added considerably to our knowledge of chimpanzee behavior and character. Our observations show most disputes are settled vocally and they much prefer quiet companionship. They are especially fond of mutual grooming and often spend extended periods carefully searching in the long black hair of one another for bits of dirt, grass seeds, or ticks. A chimp takes almost as much satisfaction in grooming a companion as in being groomed by one. I've always considered one of the most appealing animals to be the baby chimpanzee. At one year, the baby chimp swings and hangs from low branches, learns to judge distances, and improves its climbing skills. At two, it's very active and can use its strong hand with opposable thumb to grip branches firmly without fear of falling. From age three onward, it becomes increasingly independent, but puberty is not reached until the age of eight. Family closeness is very important, and communication among them is not always merely vocal. Quite frequently, facial expression, bodily movements, and touch are also means of communication. Walking erect is called bipedaling. In the chimpanzee world, the most carefree time is that spent by youngsters as they become weaned and learn the exciting tastes of new foods and the wonder of new experiences which help teach them survival. Among the things we've discovered is that chimpanzees are quite remarkably human in many respects. They kiss to show affection, or sometimes as an appeasement, and they embrace and hold hands. The research shows that such physical contact persists into adulthood. As much as physical contact is important, so are games and acrobatics. Dr. Atani is going to take me to a place not far away where the chimpanzees put into practice an amazing ability to use a simple tool. There's one tree in particular in this area where the chimpanzees come regularly to engage in what we call fishing for ants. In a remarkable learned behavior pattern passed on through successive generations, the chimpanzees find trees in which ants have nests, and then they use a piece of grass to probe for and draw out the ants and eat them. Where or how the chimps first learned to use a twig or braid of grass in such a manner is not known, but its effectiveness is obvious. Additionally, the angry ants which come out of the hall to combat the disturbance are also eaten. Frequently, the chimpanzees will break off twigs long distances from termite nests or ant trees like this and carry them along to use when they get there. Scientifically, 
What this means is an exciting first indication of higher intelligence. But this ant fishing ability is not the only crude tool chimps use. Frequently, leaves are used as napkins or towels. To me, it's amazing that wild chimps can use tools, since it's learned behavior, not instinct. Obviously, a complex, involved, and preconceived thinking process is in effect in the act of breaking off a twig, carrying it to a tree, and then successfully using it to fish for ants in this manner. It's truly remarkably intelligent behavior. It is indeed remarkable that such use of a tool is so successfully accomplished, and researchers such as Dr. Ritani increasingly feel that the behavior of non-human primates is not so very different from man's. Dr. Ritani and I were now on our way to Dr. Norikoshi's camp where important studies involving large male chimpanzees were underway. Dr. Ritani has led us to within only a short distance of another feeding station. Already we've begun seeing more chimps, such as this large female, which is heading for the food being given out by Koshi Norikoshi and his Tanzanian associates. From this feeding station, which Dr. Norikoshi has established, we'll see some additional interesting chimp behavior. Dr. Norikoshi is specializing in a close study of the actions of the large male chimps, who are somewhat warier than those we saw earlier. The males are considerably larger than the females and may reach 130 pounds. Quadrupedaling or knuckle walking is using all fours on the ground. As often occurs here, some females are attracted and they are bolder. This one, close to Marlin, has long since learned that we mean her no harm. And so she comes fairly close to get the cane. But that degree of courage has not yet been learned by this big male. The more he witnesses how the female is getting the sugar cane, which he's too afraid to pick up himself, the more agitated is becoming. And there is a good likelihood that he will work himself into a real temper tantrum. The very fact that some of his smaller companions are approaching so closely and picking up succulent chunks of cane with impunity when he himself is afraid to do so, sends the big chimp into a remarkable display of contagious anger. It will almost surely degenerate now to what we term a charging display, which also will become infectious upon others. The outstretched hand gestures indicate begging in this case. Oddly, though chimpanzees hate loud noises and won't tolerate them, they are not bothered when one of their own gives vent to harsh screams. The 
agitated behavior gives Dr. Norikoshi good material to note for later study. In predictable manner, another chimp grows frustrated. The contagion affects yet another male who takes out his wrath on his companions. Still another male is affected and the female's touch fails to calm him down and he goes into a charging display. Dr. Norikoshi records every movement. The tantrum is ending. And now a big male, calming down and returning to the feeding station, approaches a companion and settles near him, accepting a brief hug. The important research work these anthropologists are doing on the shimps and their society is providing many answers to previously unanswered scientific questions. There is an excellent likelihood that this research will help scientists to better understand man's own motivations and behavior as well as that of the animals they're actively studying. A great deal of research has been accomplished here over the past 18 years but it's still far from finished. In the years ahead, undoubtedly a great deal more is yet to be learned about the remarkable chimpanzees of Tanzania. More and more, as man's own horizons expand, he competes with wildlife, claiming and developing areas previously untouched. Because habitat capable of supporting chimpanzees is becoming very scarce, it is vital that certain areas now inhabited by chimps be set aside permanently as preserves for them. The Japanese zoological team working at Lake Tanganyika has been instrumental in getting part of the Mahali Mountain area set aside as just such a preserve for the chimpanzees. Understanding chimpanzees better can be a step through which man not only learns more about nature, but also about himself. In learning more about the nature of the most intelligent non-human animal on Earth, man can help preserve it as a truly important part of the wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, people you can count on has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, helping people find Medicare solutions for over 50 years. To learn more about plan options or how to protect your kingdom, contact us today. Mutual of Omaha, protect your kingdom.